everybody welcome to craziness right <laughs> um i just have a really few very few announcements before we get going as i think most of you know this is um we are blessing rachel and simon this morning in a unique way um we always do these wonderful like grad blessings and blessings of people leaving our community um rachel and simon are both leaving our staff and so um Rachel stays in town, Simon is out of town already, and so um, we are blessing them in the unique way, um, giving thanks for the unique gifts that they have brought to us as, um, as part of the, of the official team at St. Andrews. So um, we'll be doing that later in the service. Um, and then, let's see, okay, so everybody, I just wanted to kind of let you know sort of what's up a little bit with our worship ideas and plans as we go forward. Quad day, which is not, I mean, non -quad, un quad day, there is not really a quad day, um, is in two weeks from today, which is insane to think about, um, right? I know. Uh, and so um, we are hoping, I have no idea if it's going to happen, we are hoping that we can get um, the yard to our west um, totally worked up with like the deck repaired, um, a couple of tents, some chairs enough sound equipment that we can host worship outside safely there. Um, I can't make any guarantees because it all depends on how much, um, you know, whether we can actually get it done. Um, but uh, we will, we would love to have help if you are local. We might need just some bodies here to help us um, possibly on something like the deck and also, um, I'm not sure. We have to trim some trees and things like this. So, so if you're around and would like to help, that would be, um, it would be a great thing. Um, next week, I, we want to, we want to experiment with Facebook live here in our sanctuary, but we don't yet feel confident opening this building quite fully publicly. Um, so I'm going to write everybody who is here in town to see how many people that is, how many people would want to come, um, we would have some people here, um, but we want to do a Facebook Live to see if our sound, if it picks up our sound system, if we're, if we've got that tech uh, kind of under control for, um, for the times where we could have people here in person and then also be live streaming for people who are not here um, or who cannot get here safely. Um, so, I as a really brief explanation to why we're going to be a little bit more cautious than maybe some of the other places you're going to, um, other buildings you're going to be in in the coming weeks or if you already have been, St. Andrews does not have a good ventilation system at all. So um, we don't have air conditioning in this space. Uh, there is some out where Simon and Miranda are sitting, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but. Uh, and of course, without, and we don't, I'm, I'm quite sure that we don't have any kind of um, air filtering system as well. Our system here is so old, um, so it's very unlikely. So um, we are needing to do some retrofitting work, hopefully in this space. Um, and we hope to do that, but until we get that done, we are just not, not confident about bringing in, I mean, I would say not more than like six or eight people into this space. Um, uh, so that's just a really brief kind of overview of what we're looking at. Um, we will either do Zoom or small group of people here and Facebook Live or maximum capacity here at like maybe 10 or 15 and Facebook Live or outside, which could be possibly up to 20 or 30, which is likely our capacity anyway. <laughs> so um, bear with us keep me and our board and our uh, leadership here, please, in your prayer. And if you have any cool ideas, um, let me know. There's one other cool thing I wanna tell you, which I think is really, really, really exciting. We are looking at possibly doing some worships in other places on and around campus. Um, so for example, we could worship like at, let's just say, um, uh, we could worship there's a police academy like right over here. It's not even a couple blocks away. And we could sort of have a service that focuses on the criminal justice system in this country. Um, we could worship, for example, like maybe outside of the psychology building and have a service that sort of focuses on mental health. 
Um, there are so many really, really, really cool ideas uh, that are floating out around there. Um, so again, bear with us. We're probably going to be doing an incredible hybrid of things this, um, this fall. So with that, um, let us let us begin worship. And thank you to Louisa and Nathan, who are our readers this morning. We begin with our invocation. In the name of the God who led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt to freedom. In the name of the Savior, whose state-sanctioned execution reveals to us the inhumanity and injustices against which we are called to work, and whose death and resurrection bring salvation. In the name of the Holy Spirit, whose heart-changing power sets the world on fire for truth, love, justice, and peace. Amen. that Rachel actually chose our opening and sending hymns this morning and Rachel and that is the fastest I have ever heard ever heard Canticle of the Turning. Rachel do you want to say just a couple words about why you love that? You have to unmute yourself my dear. Yes you can. <laughs> Sorry I was in the wrong box. Yes thank you. Um, ever since we began to sing that song here, <clears throat> as you know, I've, I, my other church is the Mennonite church. And as you know, Mennonites are doctrinally pacifist. So I get a kick out of calling this the militant Mennonite version of this hymn. Um, 
and we used to sing it over there a cappella with drums only. So I wanted to sort of gift you all, or bless you all with this version. I do think it's kind of a call to, yeah, wake up and not, it's not a languorous kind of thing. <laughs> so I uh, am really glad that I could find that um, <clears throat> recording and the harmony for it. Um, I have put on the piano. So it occurs to me that chorus is really easy. You could maybe as choirs come and go, you could teach some of the um, voices to, to do that, that chorus. And we've got wonderful percussion. So anyway, that is my another uh, parting gift to you. Thank you. What we just heard was not St. Andrew's choir or voices, <laughs> FYI. It was also not Louisa drumming, but she could have drummed that easily. <laughs> Let us continue. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. With you. And also with me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of calm and God of chaos, in this time of high anxiety, uncertainty, and fear, we ask for the strength to keep our fight or flight lizard brains from taking over. Let us be informed by truth and trust rather than solely emotion. We know it is okay to be afraid and we pray that your spirit always be stronger than our fear. In Christ we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take, take heart. It is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, uh, <laughs> um, I have often wondered, actually, I've often wondered if Jesus just didn't have a lizard brain. <laughs> like, do y'all know what that is? This is the reptilian brain we have been taught uh, is responsible for all sorts of craziness, right? Dominance, aggression, territoriality, jealousy, anger, anxiety, conflict, all of the fight or flight stuff. I mean, we confess that Jesus is fully God and fully human, but I just don't see a lot of lizard brain there. <laughs> In today's gospel reading, Jesus is trying to do some really good self-care. He's getting away from everyone, spending time in prayer, and he needs it. Not long before this scene, two short chapters earlier, Jesus gets word that his cousin John the Baptist was beheaded by King Herod. So he tries to get away from everyone for some alone time, but there are huge crowds with a lot of sick and hungry people. The disciples must have known that John's death hit Jesus hard or they wanted their own chill time. So they tell Jesus to send the crowds away, but he says no. In seminary, we are absolutely taught like to have really good boundaries, right? But our savior doesn't always set the best example for us in this regard. 
Jesus comes out of his alone time and he heals the sick in the crowd and tells the disciples to share what's in their baskets. They end up feeding 5,000 plus people. So what we have in our story this morning is a really tired and a really grieving savior in need of some calm, but in the middle of continual chaos. Jesus makes the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead. He goes up to the mountain alone to pray. And when evening comes, he's still there. Maybe he gets enough time. Maybe he gets enough calm. But then there's a storm. Uh, I know a former UIUC professor who lives in South Carolina. And she posted, Monica knows this as well. Uh, she posted on Facebook this morning in capital letters, earthquake. 2020 is fired. I am so done. <laughs> right? Continual chaos. Jesus goes from one stressful thing to the next. The disciples are way out far from land. Waves are beating on the boat. And we know from other stories that they are surely terrified. Jesus heads out on the water toward the boat. <sighs> He's on the water, don't ask me to explain how this happens, and don't ask me to explain it away either, because I'm not gonna do either. The disciples rightly freak out, thinking it's a ghost. And here is Jesus, all chill and calm, and then he pulls out that line that we hear all over the Bible, do not be afraid. Okay, <laughs> right, Jesus, right. <laughs> So Peter always has something to prove, or he wants Jesus to prove something to him. So out he goes to walk on the water. And when he notices how strong that storm is, he freaks out even more and starts to sink. And then Jesus responds, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So I have often wondered, if Jesus maybe just doesn't have a lizard brain. I mean, how? Like, how does he keep it all together? How does he not fall into the same things that we humans so often do? Well, so apparently, neuroscience is sort of done, actually, with the lizard brain. The idea of a reptilian brain is seen as an unrealistic oversimplification actually, of human emotion and behavior. Neuroscientist Dr. Sarah McKay wrote a super recent article called Rethinking the Reptilian Brain, where she just debunks it straight up. We are not born with hardwired prepackaged emotions emerging from a lizard brain, she writes. We are not at the mercy of our lizard brain when we experience threat. I'm not sure that I would say that the lizard brain like has much mercy anyway, <laughs> but this is really a beautiful line, right? We are not at the mercy of our lizard brain when we experience threat. Dr. McKay introduces the idea of constructed emotion and the likelihood that we humans create these realities. And of course, we learn these constructions and then lots of therapy tries to help us unlearn, right, what we have constructed when our emotional constructions are only hurting us and people we love. We know that shaming people for being afraid is counterproductive. It is okay to be afraid. I would love also to be able to talk about so much in the faith, sin and doubt and fear, without these being so connected to shame. But man, that is some ingrained stuff. And I actually believe that Jesus here is doing something different than trying to shame. Isn't he, in some sense, really just trying to get the disciples to unlearn something and then to learn something new? Do not be afraid. You of little faith, why did you doubt? 
So I was really thrilled to read about some of the science because, you know, if the lizard brain isn't really a thing after all, then like, shoo, Jesus can still be fully human, right? <laughs> but actually, actually, I was more excited about the science because this might mean that we are not doomed, right? To this fight or flight stuff after all. This would mean that we can unlearn things like othering and the knee-jerk reactions to all of the lies we have been taught about black men and black women, about black and brown bodies and skin. It means we can unlearn the hurtful things we have constructed about ourselves, that we are never good enough or smart enough or skinny enough or beautiful enough and all the emotions that are tied to those thoughts. It means we can unlearn all of the bad, I mean, terrible, emotional and rhetorical habits we are constructing on social media in this intensively divisive world. And then we can learn something new. And actually this is the heart of the gospel. God makes us a new creation. Paul writes, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. God creates calm when our constructed emotions of fear and anxiety have too much power over us. God creates love where, where we have constructed hate. God creates compassion where we have constructed indifference and cruelty. God creates systemic justice. Systemic justice, I mean, that's such a cool idea, right? Like we don't think of it that way. We always only think of systemic injustice, but God creates systemic justice where we have constructed systemic oppression. God opens a way out where we have constructed dead ends and creates life where we have only constructed death. And God's spirit gives us the power to unlearn and then to learn new. We are like so collectively in need of some calm and we are in the middle of the continual chaos of the year 2000, right? All of the forces out there, you can call them evil forces, whatever you wanna call them, all the forces out there are tr working to keep us from dealing with our fear in faithful and good ways. But God is God of both calm and chaos. And God's spirit invites us to learn new ways of dealing with our fear. I don't have all the answers, but we know that living in constant fear is terribly hard on us. And it is not what God desires. I would like to actually invite all of us this morning to just take a moment right now to just be with your anxiety and fears about what is ahead. Maybe just choose like one, like one specific fear that you have and just be with it for a minute. Just look at it, notice it, maybe even dialogue with it. You're all on mute, so it's okay, you can do it. <laughs> just for a moment. And so now, I'd like to invite us all to take a moment to just be with God's faithfulness and goodness. Just look at it. <laughs> Notice it. Let it talk to you, address you. Maybe dialogue with it as well.
God's faithfulness and God's goodness. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, when we are afraid, this is nothing to be ashamed of. In Christ, we can confront our fear without shame. In Christ, we can step out in that water and we can just sink without shame. In Christ, we get to lay our lizard brains bare at the foot of the cross and then hear the potential good news that the lizard brain is not even a thing. Imagine being free from this thing that we have been told basically controls us. Let us pray. Make us unlearn all the constructed realities that hurt and oppress, O oh God. Give us faith when fear is strong, love when there is hatred, compassion when there is indifference and cruelty. Create in us the habits of systemic justice where there is only systemic oppression. Create in us a way out where there are only dead ends and life where there is death. Lead us to unlearn every day so our brains are wired to learn new. God of calm, God of chaos, give us calm in the midst of the continual chaos of 2020. Amen. Amen again. 
we are um, going to enter into a time of prayer. I actually um, will be really praying today instead of just um, asking for prayer requests. Um, there will be a time during the prayers. If you would like to unmute yourself, you are welcome to do that. I'll cue you, of course. This will be more like one of our more um, normal, <laughs> bad word, one of our um, more typical worship services. Let us enter now into a time of prayer for all who have need of God's presence and healing. We pray for the students, faculty, and staff of this university as they prepare to resume instruction this fall in the middle of a pandemic. Be with all who are making decisions about policies and guidelines. Be with the leaders of this congregation of St. Andrews. Be with the board of trustees of this campus ministry and stir up a sense of responsibility, especially in places where people are more likely to gather. We pray that people take this all seriously this fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Beirut, Lebanon this morning as they continue to search for the dead and grieve the traumatic explosions last week. Hold the wounded in your hands. Give strength to first responders, doctors and nurses. Comfort those who grieve and stir up an effective recovery effort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For persistence in the work of racial justice, we pray. When the headlines are quiet, Remind us that racism has not gone away and that people of color deal with this on a daily basis. We pray for an end to white supremacy. We ask that you would call us your church into the work of doing justice. So black folks, people of color and indigenous peoples all have a share in your goodness on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember by name those who need your presence and joy. Rachel and Simon as they transition off of St. Andrew's staff and Mary, Nathan, Brendan, and Emily as they prepare to join our staff. We pray for Emily as she struggles with kidney stones, for Max who is settling in better in California, for Marshall as he prepares to move west and for his friend Andrew undergoing cancer treatment. Provide continued healing to Yoshi after hip, sur hip replacement and continued strength to Josh and his work as a first responder in Champaign. For whom else do we pray this morning? You may now unmute yourselves to speak or you may remain in silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the unemployed, for all whose work is so dependent on physical gathering. We know it hurts the psyche and the heart when the gifts you have given us are not able to be celebrated. Assure those who are not working that they have immense value. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For scientists around the world, we pray, as they work to understand the coronavirus and to communicate what they learn to the public. We pray for more fruitful dialogue between people of faith and the scientific community for the sake of this world and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we gear up for a semester of uncertain ministry, Give us new ideas, new ways to worship and learn, new ways to serve our neighbor and to do justice in pandemic. We pray for all of our new leadership and we ask that our ministry would continue to reach students with the gospel of Jesus and with your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There is a lot to be anxious about, O oh God. 
Give us the gift of calm as we navigate these storms. Keep our eyes and our focus on your goodness and faithfulness so the threats around us do not overpower us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. So um, I believe it's time for the blessing. I think I have lost that page in my bulletin. Is that true? Are we doing a blessing now, Simon and Rachel? Okay, good. <laughs> I can do that. Um, you all know, many of you know, that if we were here in the sanctuary, we, we would physically surround Rachel and Simon. Uh, and, um, and if they were willing, we would even do a lay, yeah, right? A laying out of hands. Everybody put your hands out. Woo! Um, <laughs> do it. Um, I invite you, of course, to send whatever vibes uh, work um, for that reality so that they are able to sense your, your love uh, and your support. Before, the blessing is really just a simple prayer. And so um, before we do that, I would love to um, invite Simon or Rachel, if you would like to say a few words. Um, if not, no problem, I didn't like cue you on this. Um, you're welcome to say a few words right now. And after they do, if anybody else would like to say something, you're welcome to do that. Before this happens, just know that each of you is getting a kudo board. This is that really cool online. Um, it's like give kudos. It really is a cool thing. And you can actually print one of those out. Um, you can, yeah, like you can like, you know, put it on your wall or whatever, get a digital copy of it um, and pull it out when you're having a a lame crappy day uh, and so um, each of you will get that but we're gonna wait until the end of this coming week to collect all of the ones that are still coming in so um, yeah with that if Simon and Rachel would like to say something you're welcome to right now to either yeah okay. you know I can't not say anything <laughs> I mean you know that's my uh, personality right <laughs> so um i would just say um i love you guys um i really do you guys are are great and i've learned so much about the faith from each of you and i will not miss you because i hope to uh continue to be here <laughs> i'm not you know i i'll be around um not i'm not going off uh to um things unknown. Well, I guess I am. Anyway, I just want to say I love you and I thank you for the way you have um, welcomed me and um, interacted with me a whole lot more than maybe um, the church secretary. <laughs> I don't know. Church secretaries are awesome. That's, that's all. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to thank everyone too. Um, I really can't think of a better place or better community to have been to close out my time here at U of I. Um, th this is one of the, the first times in my life that I've really felt like I can be authentically myself with uh, my church body um, fully um, and really feel accepted and loved for that. Um, and I've really felt like the title of music minister was such a wonderful term. I've never seen this title before. It's always been a uh, accompanist or a choir director, but um, you know, I was, I was a little uh, surprised to see the title as music minister, but I think I understand now after a year of this Amy's line of thinking um, when it comes to the ministry that we can, we can do together through music, uh, the bonds we can forge and uh, the parts of the human spirit that we can access when we sing and when we play that are hard to access sometimes with just words. Um, so I've really enjoyed getting to share all of that ministry with all of you and the, like learn the things that you've taught me and build a community where I felt supported and loved and cared for. Um, and I hope that I made everyone feel this way as well. Um, I still remember the first time I walked through the doors. Um, it was, uh, I had just finished up a chapter meeting and I had a rehearsal at 7 p.m. And uh, Alex had mentioned, Alex Munger had mentioned that uh, during Lent, you, Lent, your services were at 
uh, in evening time and I noticed that your service had roughly just started and I was nearby so I walked in and I was sitting and listening and then communion happened and everyone got in a circle and was holding hands and singing things and it really moved me. Um, I'd never seen, you know, everybody was singing because they wanted to, not because the choir director told them they had to. And that was incredible to me. Um, that really moved me and reinforced a lot of my beliefs about music and its connection to the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So um, I'm very grateful for my time here. This isn't the last time you'll see me either. I'm sure there'll be times I'll come back. This community is wonderful and I never want to lose it. So thank you for giving me the privilege of being your music minister uh, during these times. It was really important for me too. So thank you. Thank you both so, so, so much, right? I know we're gonna actually do like an official clap in, the, in just a couple minutes. Um, no pressure at all if anybody else would like to say a word. Um, and again, know that you're getting kudo boards and I didn't tell anybody to prepare anything. So don't take it personally if they're shy. <laughs> I know that they are because every time I say, who else do you wanna pray for? And there's like nothing. <laughs> um, so I but if anybody something. else would like to, yeah, Louisa. Um, yeah, I'll be really short. I think that both of you have embodied what St. Andrew strives to be as a body of Christ. Um, using your own unique spiritual gifts. Simon is always full of energy and really shows us like what music can be. I think you brought a lot of new life and new energy and just like we're so open to so many different kinds of music throughout the whole year and I think that really helps like energize us as a body of Christ in a new way. And Rachel, what, you're, you're very kind and I love seeing you, but what really sticks out to me the most is during discussions and Bible studies, um, you just really push us to think about new perspectives and challenge things all the time, which I absolutely love and doesn't happen in church very much. Um, so I think both of you really bring an, so much to this church. retweet. Thank you, Louisa. Um, yeah, I'll also say something because, um, yeah, well, Simon, you know, I've really enjoyed working with you on this music stuff and yeah, that's been really great. And Rachel, um, yeah, like I really enjoyed the Bible studies and the books to prisoners and um, yeah, and well, we, we also have like a cello connection to your daughter. You. It's been really great to have you. So hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you, Stephanie. Anyone else? <laughs> right. Simon, um, Simon, you have a voice that is just touches my heart and the way you sang that hymn oh don't ever stop share that voice and that heart and soul you put into it no i'm sorry that's just absolutely um powerful um and i see other people nodding and smiling um yeah that's a that's wonderful and i'm yeah <laughs> i love your voice so keep that going and i know you will because it's in you so I'm just going to chime in real quick with something. One of the hard things about being a resident um, in a university town is that people always come and go. Um, and I know at St. Andrews, you see a lot of that, but it's also really, really exciting to see what new adventures people go off to. So please stay in touch with us as you go on your adventures and let us know what's going on. And Rachel, even though you're not leaving town, I think you probably have new adventures that you're looking forward to as well. So um, I would just encourage both of you to um, at least send messages back to us so that um, we're aware of what you're doing. Thank you, Michelle. Um, uh, I'm not going to go on yet. I'm going to say my little bit. And then if anybody else wants to, of course, you can still do that. Um, I just want to say, you know, Simon and Rachel, um, campus ministry, as, as many of us know, is a really unique place. 
um, you know, we can push the envelope uh, as far as we want to, <laughs> as far as we need to. Um, we can challenge, uh, right? I mean, this community is a place where we can, um, where, where every answer can be questioned, <laughs> right? Um, it's, a, it's a place which allows um, such free expression in so many ways, um, in ways that we believe are still, of course, faithful and helpful and edifying um, for the body. And, um, and Simon and Rachel, you both have such unique gifts that contribute so directly to this kind of a community. Um, and, uh, and so I, um, I am so grateful that Simon, you showed up when you did. As you know, we were, um, you were just our second music minister. We're really still living into that role. And, um, and I, I believe that you really took that in and you, uh, you really kind of leaned into what that means and, and discovered what it means also by doing ministry in music with this whole community. Um, uh, Rachel, um, you should already know that your title here was never church secretary anyway. Um, of course, we don't want to demean the role of a secretary. Um, office administrator, Rachel, Rachel, um, most, many of you know Rachel has um, a ton of theological education as well. And I am um, so grateful that she has been willing uh, to share that with us over the years and has been involved in ways in a teaching capacity. Um, I know what it means to so many of you on very personal levels, and I thank God for um, the ways, Rachel, that the things you have studied and the questions that you struggle with. I'm grateful for the ways that those things have touched uh, this community as well. So thank you both um, so, so, so much. I, uh, this was a really awesome team this year, and Rachel is right. Like, we change, we change, we change, and we roll with those changes. Um, this was just a really special year. I'm not gonna say it was better than any other year, um, but it was very, very unique and special. Uh, God blessed us richly with the two of you. Would anybody else like to say a word or two? You have three seconds to do so. Three. Hi. Um, Miranda. I know that we're, we're blessing the two people who are leaving, um, but I wanted to say as the, um, as the right hand woman of Simon. Um, You're on my left side today though. I'm on his left today. Um, that I've absolutely enjoyed your church and um, when he said he got the job here, we were both ecstatic about it and um, I have enjoyed being a part of the community as well. And um, I hope that he comes back so then he can bring me along and I'll see you guys around. And um, I'm really going to miss everybody at St. Andrews, even the people I didn't meet, because you're all extremely welcoming. And um, I just want to thank you all for giving this guy a chance. Um, notice that she paused. She said, I'm really going to miss and then pause and then say everybody because I know that her instinct was to say lady at first. So just, yeah, just know that too. Lady wishes to say um, as well a blessing uh, to Rachel and Simon. Um, yeah, and she's grateful for, for this community's understanding when she barks um, and, <laughs> um, and for your enjoyment of her as well. So, woo. Any, any other words? Marshall? Wanna, yeah, so um, I wanted to basically um, echo what Louisa was saying, but especially for Rachel, I really appreciated uh, getting us all to ask the tough questions and just have such an ability to um, get people to have a discussion and to really make it a, a great discussion. And Simon just always added so much to all of the services uh, that I've been at. 
and I just will, will really miss him. Thank you, Marshall. Okay, can I just say one thing? Please, Susanna. Okay, well, clearly, because I'm crying, um, I wasn't going to speak because I didn't know if I could, but like, my really meant so much to this community. Um, and as somebody who's been here for so long, like, it's just not, it's hard to even imagine how much um, color could still continue to be added. Um, it just really has made St. Andrews incredible. Um, and I know I've personally just been so impacted by everything I've learned. Um, about God's love through St. Andrews. And you guys have both directly, as Amy said, enabled that. So thank you very much and keep doing it. It does a lot of good. Thank you, Susanna. Any other, any other words? Thank you for those who shared. Um, again, you'll be getting kudo boards um, they're awesome so far. If you have not signed it yet, um, please make sure to do so by Friday so we can send them off. Um, and uh, yeah, and we, we do trust that we will be held together by God's spirit. Um, and we hope and pray that we'll get to see you all. Of can, course. I add, can I add one last small thing? Yes. <laughs> uh, Rachel, I'd really just like to thank you for your patience on weeks where it was Friday and you said, hey, just so you know, we need the hymns. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I really, I, uh, I, I thank you so much for your patience and understanding and flexibility and your truly gentle spirit in all of those interactions. Um, I know that you know student life can be crazy in a whirlwind and I have always appreciated that. It was just a wonderful uh, example for me as well. Um, so thank you. Well, now, see, I got to have the last word. <laughs> I know. I was wondering, you know, because this, this particular week was, but Simon, man, did you pull it out? Wow. <laughs> I don't know when you pulled that off, but don't you think, Amy? Absolutely. Unbelievable. So. <laughs> um, actually, one of the expressions I really learned from Rachel that now I use a lot is um, just a gentle reminder. <laughs> <laughs> just a gentle reminder <laughs> I get it too so <laughs> yeah um, beautiful thank you everyone the Lord be with you and also with me <laughs> since I can't hear you uh, let <laughs> thank you <laughs> they screamed and I can hear it let us pray God of all creation we give you thanks for Rachel and for Simon for their time at St. Andrews, for their witness to the gospel, for the gifts they bring to this world, and for their love and commitment to this community of faith. We give you thanks for the ways they have taught and for what they have taught. We give you thanks for the many and various ways they have shared your love and your grace with us. We pray your presence with them as they step out of their roles as staff of this church. We pray that they find rest and that they continue to find meaningful work. We give thanks specifically for Rachel's work with Books to Prisoners. On hold for a while and now we know not on hold anymore. Such an essential and good service. We pray for our continued relationship with Books to Prisoners, and of course, for our continued relationship with Rachel. We give you thanks for Simon and his musical gifts, which are astounding. We ask that you lead him to a place in this world where those gifts will be celebrated and compensated. We ask that Rachel and Simon continue to be a blessing wherever they go, we trust that this will be the case. Remind them of our love for them and hold us together always in Christ. Now, Rachel and Simon, if you are up for looking um, at somebody who is gonna do a direct address. <laughs> oh, yeah, and do the laying out of hands now, everybody. Laying out of hands, here we go. 
Rachel and Simon, may you go out into the world in peace. In your work and play, remember the promise of your baptism. Be of good courage, hold to what is good, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, and love and serve God by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of Jesus Christ. Let the congregation say amen. Amen. You can unmute yourselves and clap and give virtual hugs. And after about 30 seconds of that, um, yay. <laughs> we now will hear a prayer of good courage, um, which we did record uh, in the spring. We continue with the sharing of the peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you all. Virtual sharing of the peace. And our offering. God of abundance, without a collection plate, we imagine offering differently. Be part of all our decisions. How we earn and spend our money. What we do with our time how we use the gifts and talents you've given us for the betterment of our world. Make us live as though each moment of each day were our offering to you and to our neighbor. In Christ we pray, amen. Amen.
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God, for Slyman. Thank you, Stephanie. That was, yeah, you guys make me cry every week. <laughs> it's a good thing, it's a gift. Let us pray now uh, the prayer that Jesus taught. Blessed one, our father and our mother, holy is your name. May your love be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love and all that your love brings to birth and the fullness of love that will be are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God bless you with faith and truth and anger and courage and perseverance and solidarity and justice and compassion and wisdom and resistance and summer fun and family and friends and rest and love. May God go with you now and bless you with what you need for the days ahead. Amen. 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 God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide up hold you. May the shepherds care and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you. that there is a postlude at um, after this dismissal. Go in the peace of Christ, live the justice and the love of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God.
somebody's got to stop me from going out there and hugging both of them. <laughs> run, Amy, run. Go hug them. No, there's a man. I run. I know, I don't ask on. <laughs> ah, thank you so much, Simon. <laughs> Simon's ready. <laughs> yep. See? <laughs> Why don't you just put a mask over your whole body? Yeah, good idea. Yep. Okay, I might. Only if you're okay with it. We, we can do a hug. We can do a hug. We're waiting. Hugs are apparently <laughs> less dangerous. We'll come. Right, and we keep our faces like away from each other. Yeah, right? past each other. Yeah. You ready? We'll hold your breath and wear the mask. Yes. Put a mask on, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> okay.